Good evening. Welcome to the QCIS channel. On this channel, get a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. My name is Leon Jones, and what I'm going to present to you tonight is how does an asphalt batch plant work? Now, if you watched my previous video, I talked about concrete. Now, asphalt is very important because asphalt is used on driveways, parking lots, French curves, and a lot of your roadway surfaces. And again, when it comes to asphalt, you have to have the right mix design. And asphalt also has to be tested by way of taking samples and coring. Now, what I'm going to do, let me share my screen. And let's talk about the asphalt batching plant. Now, the definition, asphalt batching plant is a set of equipment that produces final mixture batch by batch and characterized by Intermittent pauses between batches due to the accurate weighing system for dosing the aggregates, bituminin, and other admixtures. The products of it are of high quality. Now, there is a time interval between two mixing batches because of the mixer, so it's also known as the discontinuous or intermittent type. Now, in asphalt batching plants, the mixer with double arms and paddles means the mixing quality is undoubtedly better when compared with continuous plants because it is forced. Now, what you have here, you have your typical twin shaft batch mixer. And here's the mixing process of batch mix HMA plant. HMA is hot mix asphalt. Now, again, how does an asphalt batch plant work? Basically, aggregates are fed by belt conveyor from the cold feeders to a rotary drying drum where the moisture is removed. It is then elevated to a set of screens, which is divided into several component sizes and stored in hot aggregate temporary storage bins. Then these aggregates are then correctly proportioned into a high or into a way hopper. Again, the third step is the aggregates are correctly proportioned into a way hopper. Then it is introduced into a pug mill and mixed for a specific amount of time. Then after that, look at bituminin is introduced at the proper time and the combination is then mixed for the required time. And then the pug mill gate opens at the end of the cycle and the finished asphalt mix is discharged directly into a waiting truck or the special holding silo. Now, advantages. Well, batch plants manufacture a very high quality finished product due to the accurate measurement of each batch that is produced. Now, the intermittent production process enables them to easily switch back and forth between different mix specifications if necessary. Now, in batch plants, the pug mill uses arms and paddles attached to them, thus creating a forced or physical mixing of the components. Now, in most cases, they come with bag house dust collectors. The dust generated during the whole process could be captured, leaving the surround environment not polluted that much. Now, again, here is what a plant looks like. This is what we call BIM, Building Information Modeling. Starting off, you have your cold aggregate supply system, your drum burner, your coal burner, your coal feeder, your cyclone dust collector, your bag house dust collector, 
your hot aggregate elevator, your vibrating screen, your filter supply system, weighing and mixing system, asphalt storage, and bituminin supply system. And again, here's the flow chart where everything starts to go. Everything. This is how this is how it is. It's the flow chart. Now, asphalt batch plants make small accurate batches of asphalt mixture through a process that is repeated over and over until the tonnage for a project has been manufactured, beginning from hot aggregate weighing and ending with discharging action completed. One whole batch usually takes about 40 to 45 seconds. Now the mixing time can be lengthened or shortened and thereby the mixing quality can be varied depending on the type of material that is being produced. Now, by the way, the greatest weakness of batch mix type equipment is about 30% of its time spent waiting on the bins to weigh up, the mixer to empty, and so. Now, again, this is an asphalt drum plane. You know, just like concrete, remember I told you about mobile or portable plants? Well, you also have mobile asphalt plants. And here's a super mobile asphalt plant. Then you have your asphalt plant SLB series. Now, again, the asphalt drum mix plant is a facility that is featured with a continuous paving material manufacturing process without the interval pauses. It's more time saving and efficient. So compared with its counterpart, the lower costing equipment will be ideal if the quality standard of paving materials is not pretty high. Now drum mix plants prepare asphalt mix through a continuous process as so they were often or they're often required the use of temporary storage silos in an effort to avoid downtime so basically when you have a drum mix plant it has a continuous process and it requires the use of temporary storage silos basically to avoid downtime during the final mixture not dealt with in time so how does the asphalt drum plant work well, you have flow meters and calibrated feed belts. They're used to measure the liquid bituminin and cold aggregates, which help ensure they proportionally enter the dryer or mixer. Now you also have cold aggregates, and they're conveyed to the dryer mixer, where the first half is dedicated to remove moisture. And you have the correct percentage of liquid bituminin which is then ejected and the result material is thoroughly mixed into the other half of the drying drum. And the final asphalt mix is discharged into the waiting truck or the special holding silo. Now again, asphalt drum mix plants, almost all asphalt drum mix plants used to be of the parallel flow type with the aggregate and the burner flame traveling down the chamber in the same direction. Now, the counterflow technology has prevailed these years with the aggregate traveling down the chamber toward the burner flame. Now, due to continuous production property to avoid downtime caused by the excessive final mix that is not delivered offsite immediately, a small temporary storage bin is sometimes a must. Now, to control pollution, the drumming equipment is often equipped with water, dust filters, or bag house collectors. Now, as you see, here's what a, and this is a better rendition than the previous one I had on the batch plant. So you can see, you have your, your cold aggregate hopper. This is your bituminin tank. Then your burner. Then this is your drying and mixing drum. Your elevator. 
This is your hot asphalt silo. And this is your control room. And this is your water duct filter. Now again, here's the flow chart. Tell you how the process flows and how the plant works. This is a flow chart of a continuous hot mix plant. Now, the advantages of this type of plant, it's by eliminating most of the steps taken by an asphalt batching plant to produce a mix. Now, a drum plant is able to do the job more economically as the rhythm of production is not broken into batches. Now, it is a continuous process that creates a homogeneous mixture that can be manufactured at a high rate. Now, since there are no mixing tower or elevators, the system is therefore considerably simplified with a consequent reduction in the cost of maintenance. Now, due to their nature of design, asphalt drum plants are limited to conduct one mix recipe at a time, so the continuous amps are the correct facilities for the companies who are not concerned with switching back and forth to various recipes. See, with a batch plant, it has to be intermittent because it basically batches asphalt. Now, with a batch plant, it switches back and forth between different mixes. Let me give you an example. In Indiana, they use hot mix asphalt. Pennsylvania, they call it super pay. Some may call for 370. Some may call for 376 or 364. Different mixes. Like shoulders require a different mix than your main drive lanes. Now, here's what a mobile asphalt plant looks like again. Movable asphalt plant, super mobile asphalt plant, and this is a drum plant. Mobile asphalt plant, MDHB, and a portable hot mix plant, YLB. Now, again, mobile asphalt plant mixing is a batching or continuous asphalt producing equipment that has its mobility performance improved by being designed to be more compact and mounted with the automobile chassis. It is an ideal facility to carry out small or medium scale road construction projects, especially those requiring the equipment to move from one place to another frequently. This is to say the portable features allow you to carry the mobile mixing factory along with your bandwagon wherever you go for the next project. So in terms of maneuverability, mobile asphalt plant as a category can be further subdivided into semi-mobile, mobile, and super mobile genre or genre. Now what's more, they all have their most applicable regions around the world. For example, despite the fact that portable plants are easy to deploy in the mountainous regions, or somewhat confined areas for those road building projects with the features of a long distance and of course, narrow pavement, or the pavement is definitely much narrow. Mobile or hyper mobile plants seem more suitable than semi-mobile plants simply because they can leverage their unparalleled advantages such as fast transportation, ease of assembly and rapid production restart to the full, the hyperportable hot mix plants able to re-enter into production with only some hours after they settle down at the new places with no needs, trains, much labor force and civil work. So convenient that the super mobile amp has prevailed in the South American continent since it came out. Now, again, here's what a mobile plant looks like. Now, again, advantage. Its compact structure leads to less land footprint 
making it capable to be placed in a narrow or confined area. Ali Mobile, convenient for transportation and relocation due to the four main modules and each with a mobile chassis. Ease of reinstallation and can restart production with less trouble to handle, especially applicable to those projects demanding the plant to move frequently. Low ambition, low in investment, low initial investment in highly cost effective. So it's fairly to choose between portable and stationary once you know the answers to a couple of questions. Do you need to move your plant? If so, how often will it be moved? Now, other incontrovertible rule, one in contract, one in Travertable rule is that the portable asphalt plants cost substantially more than their stationary brethren. So those companies who need to move the plant once every few years should consider buying a skid mount plant or skid mounted plant with flexible wiring like SO cord equipped with quick disconnects. And again, we get down to your asphalt recycling plant. Now, this is one that actually takes your millings that have been taken from the existing pavement and they recycle them. Not recycled asphalt plant, I, asphalt recycler, RAP, RAP, and hot recycled asphalt. Now, again, the definition, asphalt recycling plant, is equipment well designed to combine reclaimed asphalt pavement, hot fresh aggregate and filler to produce new finished mixture that can be used for driveways, roadways and parking lot repairs. Recycling of pavements can offer engineering, economic and environmental benefits. Now the process involves offset processing and mixing of the wrap with a predetermined proportion of Specially formulated bituminum emulsion. The mixture is then transported to the job site and placed in a manner similar to conventional hot mix asphalt. Now, again, you have the wheel loader, the wrap feeder, the belt scale, then it goes right up to the converter, a conveyor, the belt conveyor, then from the belt conveyor goes right up through the bucket elevator. Then it gets dry. This is your dryer. Then it comes down to your storage bin. Once it gets into the storage bin, it's going to go to your weighing hopper. And then from your weighing hopper, it's going to go to your mixer. Now, advantages by applying Asphalt recycling technology, the use of the new pavement materials can be reduced by recycling reclaimed asphalt, achieving lower cost and lower environmental impact than conventional methods. Asphalt fumes and harmful gas generated in the production process can be recycled into drying, drum, and burn again, reducing exhaust emission. Recycled asphalt proportion can reach up to 50%, reducing the production cost to a large degree. So actually, recycled asphalt mix can be divided into recycled mixed asphalt and recycled cold mixed asphalt based on the road surface pavement process. Cold on-site recycling, also named cold in-place asphalt recycling, short for CIR, cold Central plant recycling, hot on site recycling, also named hot in place recycling, shorted for HIR, and hot central plant recycling are all, or they all fall under this issue. HIR is unable, however, to correct structural failures and can only be used as treatment to road surface distresses like cracking, raveling 
low friction values, and distortion. CIR is also considered not to have the ability to treat the underlying structural problems. So basically, compared to conventional paving, a road rehabilitated cold central plant recycling delivers a cost savings of 25 to 50%. Moreover, compared to on-site recycling, cold central plant recycling can realize better process control of recycled materials, significant structural improvements without changing the geometry of the existing pavement and the utilization of low-cost recycled materials. Now, just a few questions. Okay, how much does an asphalt plant cost? Generally, ranges from 100,000 to 5 million. And then what kind of return on investment do you get? Well, it only accounts for less than 2% of the entire investment because the procurement costs of aggregates and bituminum accounts for more than 75% of the total cost, then you have to add fuel, which accounts for about 12%. And do you need an asphalt, do you need a new plant or a used one? Both have distinct advantages over the other, but the advantages of something brand new is, is very obvious because of the full factory sport and it's new. And most factories will assist you in setup. Now, batch mix and Drum mix asphalt, which one to choose? Well, advantages and disadvantages. Have them listed right here. You can see them, read them for yourself. And also put the link down there at the bottom so you can see all this information. And where to buy a higher performance ratio asphalt plant? Well, you already know what it is. It's, of course, China. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a demonstration, a video on how an asphalt plant really works. So fair use, sit back and enjoy it. And this is just an overview, how a plant works. This itself is all computer controlled. Different sized aggregates are fed into individual hoppers, referred to as cold feed bins, and by using variable speed belt conveyors at the bottom of the hoppers, the aggregates can be extracted and ratioed from the cold feed bins into the plant based on the job mix formula and the desired production rate. A screen is typically positioned between the cold feed bins and the drying drum to keep any oversized material from accidentally getting into the mix. And the final conveyor feeding the material into the drying drum will have a belt scale in it, which measures the combined flow of the material as it passes over the belt so that liquid asphalt cement can be properly proportioned into the mix later in the process. Since asphalt cement is a petroleum-derived product, aggregates must be dried and heated for the asphalt cement to successfully bond to the aggregate particles to produce the final asphaltic mixture or asphaltic concrete. The most cost-effective way to do this is with a rotary rock dryer with a burner embedded inside of it. As material enters the rotary drying drum, it progresses toward the burner lifting and tumbling in the hot gas stream, drying and heating to the final mix temperature. This trip usually takes three to five minutes depending on the size and type of plant facility. As water turns to steam, the gas velocity inside the dryer increases substantially. 
This gas velocity can approach 50 to 60 miles per hour depending on the production rate and the moisture level. If you've ever stood on a beach in a storm, you know how this amount of wind can carry sand right off the beach and into the air. You can therefore imagine the carryout potential as the sand and the fine aggregate are tumbled in a hot gas stream inside a dryer. This is important to us with our plant facilities because as you dry and heat material in the dryer, fine sand and dust particles are carried out with the steam and the expanded air. These particles must be collected and returned because they're important to the mix formula. The dust control equipment on the plant does this. The first square box in the duct is called a knockout box. Small sand particles are collected in this box and returned right back into the drying dump. The second and larger box, which has the exhaust fan attached to it, collects the finer dust. This box is filled with hundreds of bags on cages, much like a vacuum cleaner. Collected dust is then cleaned off the filters using compressed air or reversing the process gas flow, depending on the type of collector. And when it falls down into the hopper, a screw conveyor returns the dust to the process. Learning how to successfully operate a rotary dryer and the burner for controlling mix temperatures and the dust collector for fines return is a key skill set for a plant operator. Since asphalt pavements can be produced using reclaimed asphalt pavement or wrap, plants are also equipped with wrap bins that allow proportioning of reclaimed pavement into the mixes. Wrap is introduced into the drying drum after the virgin aggregates are dried and heated. A scalping screen to keep out oversized material and a belt scale is also used in these conveyors to measure the flow of the wrap into the plant just like the virgin material. In the drying drum, what is actually occurring is the virgin aggregate is being superheated so that it in turn can dry and heat the reclaimed asphalt pavement particles. While virgin aggregate and wrap is being dried and heated, liquid asphalt cement is being drawn out and measured into the process. As we discussed earlier, there are typically different types of asphalt cement depending on the type of mix being produced. The asphalt cement is metered against the flow rate of the aggregate and the reclaimed pavement moving into the drying drum. The computer controls adjust the amount of new binder for both the virgin aggregate and the recycled aggregates that already have usable binder in them. Some plant facilities have a separate mixing device like the mixing drum you see here where the new liquid asphalt cement is added to the virgin aggregate and wrap as the last step in the mixing process. These outside mixers are added for a variety of reasons. But plants are also designed so that this entire process is accomplished in one piece of equipment. The completed mix now is transferred to the storage silos for dispensing into trucks. Most urban plants have several silos so different mixes can be stored for multiple jobs. And the silos Using are the often silos heated right and here. insulated so the mixes can be stored for extended periods of time. Computerized loading controls the accuracy of the loading and ticketing process, and the mix is sent to the job.
And when it comes to asphalt, again, asphalt is used for driveways, parking lots, and roadways. And you have different types of plants. You saw a rat plant. You saw a drum plant. You saw a mobile plant. And you, you saw a conventional plant. I believe there are four plants. Drum plant, rap, mobile, and batch. All four plants. They make concrete. And they all go through a process. And a good plant operator and a good engineer, as well as a good inspector, understands the process. And the process begins with a mixed design. And everything is done by specifications. Now, most of your DOTs, they use the last type of plant where you had the three silos because mixed designs change. But for the most part, the plants all work the same way. Now, generally, the plants are open from March to December. Now, depending on what state you work in, the area engineer or the ACE, they can approve keeping the plants open for emergency repairs. Now, I've been on jobs to where they actually paid in January. Now, of course, you have to worry about by two minutes of pavement, they call it cement. We call it asphalt. Same thing. It can crack because it's cold. And generally, if you're testing the asphalt for temperature, have a little temperature gun, and generally in a hopper at 325 degrees, you want to make sure when the truck is coming onto the site that the hopper will, they, it looks like a little tent. I want to make sure that they cover the asphalt so it doesn't cool. And you also want to make sure, you right, have to understand what the hopper is because what the con, what, what happens in most of these paving jobs goes from a dump truck to a material transfer video or vehicle which segregates all the asphalt into the hopper. Now, the hopper opens like this, closes like this. You want your hopper to close because you want to keep the asphalt warm. You don't want it, you know, you don't want it to be cool unless they're putting down cold patch or something for joints. But basically, when you're testing asphalt, you test it for compaction. The contractor does that. You also look at the depth why it's going down, and you have to look at, okay, when it comes to depth, how much pounds per square yards per inch are they placing? Let me give you an example. If they're pouring about, if they're placing about an, uh, an inch, it's usually 110, 115 pounds per square yard, per inch and then two and a half and and those numbers are very significant because as an inspector you have to make sure that that depth is right because the contractor could be placing the asphalt too thin or too heavy and when it comes to your your base and your binder or intermediate intermediate don't place a little bit more. It's going to be placed a little heavy. It's going to be right around 300, three, basically 330 pounds per square yard per inch. You have to make sure that they're placing that amount. Now, another way to really find out about the yield without even doing all the calculations is to measure the depth, then you'll know without any mathematics that the asphalt is being placed correctly or incorrectly. And then as an inspector, you're going to pull samples. Depending on what DOT, I'll give an example, Indiana, you have lots and sublots. 
Each lot is 5,000 ton. Each sublot is 1,000 ton. That is for your base and binder or intermediate. Now for your surface, each lot is 3,000 tons, which means each sublot is also 1,000 tons. Why? Because you're not placing as much surface as you do binder and base. And remember, surface is a lot faster. Now you have 19 millimeter, nine and a half, nine and a half millimeters generally, your surface, you have your binder and base, which is 19. You also have 20, 25 and 37, I believe as well. So you have 364, 370, 376. Now that just depends on the region you're in, what type of asphalt you use, but it's all HMA and you have to take the tickets because all the tickets at the plant, they're computerized and they're given to the inspector. The inspector totals up the tonnage and that's what the contractor gets paid. So, again, just saw some information on how batch plant works for asphalt. And if you like what I just presented, because that concludes this topic on how a bituminous asphalt plant works. But again, if you like what I just presented, please comment, share and subscribe. And if you're looking for some political social content, check out my other channel, the 411 Talk Zone radio show, also on YouTube. Now, if you cannot find the QCIS channel or the 411 Talk Zone radio show on YouTube, both of those channels will also be on Twitter. And to take it one step further for the QCIS channel, since it's an educational channel, you find that channel on my LinkedIn page. And once again, thank you for listening and viewing this content on the QCIS channel. On this channel, you get a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. I want you to have a wonderful and gracious evening.